You're gonna love today's video. Check this thing out. It's awesome. Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer and my buddy Josh. What's up? <laughs> and he's here to help me out today with a cool project. So today's project is our Honda Foreman 500. This is a 2017 Honda Foreman 500 and I've got another one that's a 2018 model or 2019. I'm not even sure. It's all outfitted with racks and stuff. This one we bought so we could outfit it with something else really cool. And what's really cool is this right here. This is a wild hair manufacturing loader system and three point hitch system. So we reached out to wild hair manufacturing. They gave us a smoking deal on this system and we're going to install it on the Honda Foreman 500 ATV today and it's going to be a good time. So without further ado, let's get busy. This is not going to serve as a full on install video, but we wanted to show you this cool tool on this ATV, a little bit about how it installs and we're going to put it to work. All right. Woo. I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life times like this If you mess with my freedom I'll tell you just what you can kiss That's right Alright, so this is our Honda Foreman 500. Again, it's a 2017 model. It's got about 50 hours. I picked this thing up for a great deal just before COVID. Man, it's really hard to find a good deal in an ATV nowadays because people are outside doing stuff where they were inside doing stuff together. So instead of going to that basketball game, they're hopping on an ATV and they're getting work done in their yard or they're going four-wheeling. So what we've got here, again, is the Honda Foreman 500 2017 model. And we've got a lot of work to do on this thing today. So we're going to give you some little details as we install, but you'll get probably a time lapse of all of us working around and moving stuff around. Even Mrs. Stony Ridge might help out a little bit today because this is going to be a bit of a chore. Hopefully we won't have to drill any holes or make any modifications. But if you do decide to buy one of these uh, wild hair loaders, I'll post a link down the video description and you may have to do some modifications to whatever unit you have. You order it specific to the type of ATV that you're using. So let's get busy. Dude, look at all this stuff. Oh my goodness. So I've got the instruction manual. It's not very thick. Um, this is what our end result is going to look like. And I'm going to tell you, we are not going to have time to put the three point on. I have several three point implements, a snow blade, a bucket, which is right down here. And <laughs> I guess we'll just take you over here and show you all this stuff. Uh, box scrape right there, a snow blade right there, a disc harrow and a some sort of ripper. I don't know what you call it, like a plow, like a, a seven point plow and pallet forks. Man, lots of implements, so awesome. We, in this video, are just gonna install the front mount. In a future video, we're gonna show you how to put a three-point on your ATV. This is gonna be a complex <laughs> job. Uh, instruction manual says it's gonna take two to three hours. So it's not very heavy, but you need two people to do this. This is the hydraulic pump setup, and the hydraulic pump setup basically works everything on this. So it will work the three-point hitch that's going on the rear, and it will work the valve system for the front end loader, and it's all controlled electronically. This is the battery box. There will be a deep cycle marine battery in here, and then we have ATF, automatic transmission fluid, that's gonna go inside this little reservoir right here. We're not installing this yet. We're gonna get to the physical part, and then we're gonna get to the hydraulic part, but we set it all back here in place. All right, folks, the first step in this is installing the loader, but instead of installing the loader first, we're gonna go ahead and put the shock blocks in, and these are lockouts for the shocks. They're bigger on the one end and smaller on the other end, and these slide in place and lock out the front shocks. My friend Josh here, what's up? <laughs> is gonna be helping me. So he's gonna raise up the four-wheeler so I can get in here and install these shock blocks. You don't need to take the wheels off your machine. So here's how these work. They have two sections and they're held together with a nut and bolt and it's adjustable. Okay, so you find the most appropriate section to lock out your shock and you slip it over the coil under here, okay? And you slide the bolt in, just like so, and then you put the nut back on. It's a nylon locking nut. Now, you also have a chain portion that's attached to this. So once we get it installed on the shock, we'll put the chain on there. This is the chain right here 
and there's a cotter key that pops out. We'll slide the cotter key out, slide that into the chain, and that will wrap all the way around the shock. And that's how the shock blocks are put in place. I'll show you. So we've got the ATV up in the air, that way the shocks will be fully extended. And this is the shock block I was telling you about. We're gonna slip this guy apart, find the appropriate hole. Again, the big part goes to the bottom, small part goes to the top. Here is a problem. You may find this problem on your ATV. Your shock has a little plastic cover on it right here. You may have to cut some grooves into this little plastic cover right here in order to slip the shock block into place. The way we're gonna cut this plastic piece off and we're gonna let it slide down over top of the shock, the way we're gonna cut this is we're just gonna use a box cutter and we're simply gonna go along the top edge here. Just popped off and it slides down right here out of the way. Okay, so you want your upper piece to be at the highest point on the shock here and your lower piece at the lowest point on the shock down here that you can get it. That way you don't have very much suspension flex at all. Now we'll run our bolt through the appropriate hole, install our nut to 7 sixteenths. There are several holes all the way around here, you can see those. We'll put it in the appropriate hole, there we go, okay, wrap it around and then hooks right into there. Holds it firmly into place. We'll bend our cotter key just like so. Repeat this process on the other side. Now, we're gonna let it down, and the shock blocks keep the front end from flexing on this machine now, so it's stiff as a board. All right, the first step here, me and Josh are gonna lift this leg system up and turn it over, and over the front of the ATV onto the rack. That should sit there, but if it doesn't, I've got Josh. What's up? So the kit comes with U-bolts, and the U-bolts just run in right through here. And that's how we'll attach. The kit says do not tighten just yet, so we're just gonna get them in place. Stretch this out just a little bit. As you see right here, we wanna come across and have the most contact with our U-bolt and our frame and our rack that's on the ATV. So we'll cut right across there. There we go. And that way we have the most contact with the rack on the ATV. No, no, yes, get out. <laughs> Guys, there's a bird in the shop. It flew in just a second ago and it won't get out, get out. So right now Josh is holding the rack in position for me very patiently as a red finch has flown into the shop. We have baby chicks in the shop, by the way, and you'll hear them cheep, 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 cheep. They're really cute. But do you hear that? That's a finch. Get out! <laughs> we gotta get him out. Who knew the birds spoke Schwarzeneggies? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're moving on. Birds stuck in the garage. Nothing I can do about it. Uh, instructions say don't tighten these all the way down. So we're gonna not go all the way down. Not too firm, not too soft. We're down here at the bottom of the four wheeler. If it measures 44 inches from here to the other side or less, then you don't have to put an extension plate on. We've got it stacked up on boards right here about a half inch from the floor. This is cool, man. This is fun how this thing's coming together. Then we mount this guy up, which will in turn mount up right here once we get everything centered. This is the only thing it says to securely mount uh, before we start tightening all the bolts down. I'll line it right up. Guys, tell me if you like this kind of content. If you like this mechanical content like this, pound that like button. I love doing stuff in the shop like this. This is my thing right here, man. Good times. Repeat this on the other side. And now we have our mounting plate. We can start mounting this critter up. Next step, so we got this arm, and this is loosely mounted to the rack on the front of the four-wheeler. And we've got this leg, this leg mounts up right here, and all this is gonna match up in just a second, but we'll put a nut, and a washer, and a nut, and a washer, and it says to loosely install this. All this stuff is loosely put together until the final tighten. I wanna be able to move around a little bit as we slide this back into position, or slide this forward into position. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. 
All right, next step, me and Josh so. are gonna push this back into the mounting position. Looks good. Very good. I like. Now, we've got two through bolts that we need to put in on each side of the loader system. Okay, we're gonna mount these up in the top two bolt holes, just like so. Try to be conscientious and not uh, put any dents or dings in this stuff. We scratch it up as we install it. And the instructions say, do not tighten these. So we'll go on the other side, we'll do the same thing, but I am gonna snug them down just a little bit. So the next step is, Josh. What's up? and I are going to install these pins. Krispy Kreme donut just about ruined the whole project just a second ago. Uh, they're right there. I only had one. I could have four more and still be happy. So Josh and I so. lifted the loader on, put the pin in place right here, and we actually had to adjust out. So these two bolts are adjustable. There's also an adjustment down here. So we've got the bucket in place. This will be the loader bucket. And there's an adjustment right here. We put this adjuster down to the lowest point also. The next part we had to do was bolt on. We had this loosely bolted on. This is where our hydraulic cylinder to our bucket and our loader system hook together. So the next thing you're gonna see me and Josh do Look. is raise up on this and install the hydraulic cylinders in their perspective places. All right, this is, seems a little complex, but it's not too bad. This is the cylinder that goes to the bucket, and these are the cylinders that go to the loader arms. There are two different length pins. The long pins go to the long side, up closest to the operator. Short pins go to the short side. Pretty simple. So, as you install these pins right here, just for your information, in case you decide to get one of these, this is fun. This is interesting to install. We've done a bit of head scratching here because everything is loosely installed until you get it all put together and then you tighten everything down so it all aligns perfectly. My pin was too long. I put too long of a pin. A little tap from a ball peen hammer helps a lot because if you look at these hydraulic cylinders, and again, this one is for the bucket. The cylinder portion may not be totally aligned, okay, where it mounts up. So you might have to twist it a little bit, and that's what we had to do is give it a little twist, a little tweak. We've been graced by the presence of <laughs> Mrs. Stony Ridge. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Guys. The boys needed a supervisor. Yeah, this, this, is taking, this is taking a bit. There's some head scratching going on. Uh, not because it's confusing, because we want to do it right the first time. <laughs> so the last step in installing all three cylinders, we put one cylinder here, one cylinder there. The hoses go downward. So we swap back and forth like eight times. And finally we figured out the hoses go downward and there's a bracket right here. So we'll snug up this bracket and that should be it for our cylinder install. And we should start moving back for the rear of the machine here. Our hydraulic pump does not run off of the power on the ATV, it runs off a battery. As this machine sits in the shop, it will be charging on a uh, trickle charger all the time. So we'll keep the battery topped off, and that's what runs the hydraulics on this. I'm excited to use this, but we might have to wait till tomorrow. We might get a demonstration of it going up and down. But the next step in this process is going to be to install a plate. And this is the plate that goes on the foot pad down here. We're gonna have to drill a hole through the bottom plate that runs all the way across the bottom of the four-wheeler and do this on both sides and install this plate, which sandwiches together and holds it all in place. Then we'll snug down all the bolts that we left loose. So the way this works, this bolt will go right in this hole here that I'm getting ready to drill out. Okay, so we're gonna get started right about there. We're gonna drill all the way through the bottom plate that crosses the four-wheeler. There we go. I lost me bit. Get your foot back here. Oftentimes, not so sharp things happen to sharp people because they don't wear their safety glasses. Sing to me, baby. is a bug. We're to the final stage, the final tighten down before we get into the hydraulics and the battery system. So first thing I'm going to do, 
I got a really long extension here because that's what I like to do. I'm gonna get that snug and I've gotta actually pull this side just a little bit before I tighten it down. So I'm gonna get over here, get in position, give her a little tug and snug her down. Now we're checking clearance back here in two places and up here in the front so that we don't hit our hydraulic cylinder in the front. All the nuts and bolts need to be tightened down right now. So I'm checking all my clearances and I'm good to go. There's space in between all the plastic and this metal. So we're ready to go and tighten her down. So the next step is installing the hydraulic pump and the battery box. The battery box will go right here, it'll be mounted up to there and it'll be hooked to this pump and we've got to fill the pump with oil. So we've got a little bit of a chore to go. We also have to mount this up with U-bolt real quick. So pretty simple. This is the switch system and it goes on the handlebar. This runs back to the rear of the machine. We're just going to lay it in place and it'll plug into our hydraulic system right here. So we'll get these lines all unwound and unzip tied and get them ran. Now we have to run hydraulic lines from the back of the ATV all the way to the front of the ATV and these are all color coded and they'll match up with their perspective color on the front of that mounting plate that we just installed. All of our hydraulic lines are laying up here. Here's our first U-bolt, washer, nylon, lock nut. We've seen this before. I think we have U-bolt number two right here. Very simple. Each one of these are color coded, which is very nice. Red goes to red. So we're gonna start at the top and work our way down. Is this driving you crazy? It's driving me crazy. This is a zip tie gun. We'll get rid of all these little danglers. Nice. You don't have one of these? You just ain't living right. This is a switch mechanism. I don't know which way's up and which way's down, so I'm gonna wait to install this. And we'll install this with some heavy duty zip ties right here on the handle. And you'll still be able to operate the machine, but you'll be able to operate your loader and your bucket. So these are the dip switches that you'll use. They're momentary switches that you'll use. We'll mount this right to the handlebar. I'm not sure which way's up, which way's down, or how I want this, whether it's gonna be like this, or like this, so we're gonna have to wait just a minute until we get all the pump running, and then we'll decide which way we're gonna mount this. Now, on the back of the hydraulics, we'll have a switch that will go to the rear remote and the front remote. So we'll have three point installed on the back of this in one of our future videos. Pretty cool. This is gonna be awesome. It's gonna make a crazy noise when we first hit it because we gotta pump all that air out of the hydraulic system. So let's put some hydraulic oil in and hook the battery up. Next thing we install is the battery box. And in order to install the battery box, we're not using U-bolts because U-bolts would just tear this thing to pieces. So what we're doing is zip ties as a temporary solution because this battery is gonna be pretty heavy. Well, with the loader system on here, you're not really supposed to exceed five miles per hour. So I don't foresee the battery falling out with some heavy duty zip ties. We've got to drill a couple holes and we'll zip tie it in place and drop our heavy duty marine battery in here. There we go. And we'll bring in some nice heavy duty zip ties. It's on there good. Ain't going nowhere. We're going to drop in our heavy duty deep cycle Duralast marine battery. Negative, negative, positive, positive. We're going to hook up positive first. All you folks out in YouTube land corrected me the other day when I replaced the tractor battery. I said you're supposed to put the negative terminal on, I mean the positive terminal on first. So, I'm doing it because of you. So now we're going to plug in our lead. Right here, this is our electrical. Just like so. Nice connection. And we're going to fill up our hydraulic fluid with ATF. Just any old ATF will work. I'm told we're using multi-purpose ATF and it takes about four quarts. You want to pour it to within one inch of the top of this little tank. All right. 
we're gonna go ahead and put the lid on, fire this puppy up. Okay, sitting in the operator station. Oh yeah, we can hear some lines filling up. So final step is a quick install of our controller. Very simple, Whoop, without hitting the button. <laughs> We're gonna snug it up against here and it's on the shifter side. Just make note of that, it's on the shifter side. And these are heavy duty zip ties right here. These are the heavy duty, all weather, good zip ties. All right, Josh. What's up? We're done. We're done for the day. Can you believe it? That says two to three hours for the install. It took us a while to get this done. Filming things takes a little bit longer, but it took us a while. It took us a little bit of head scratching to get this done. The instructions are really good. There's also a video that you can watch on the website. This thing is super awesome. It's from Wild Hair Manufacturing. Again, thanks to Wild Hair for giving us a smoking deal and thanks to Josh for all the help, man. Appreciate it. We'll catch you guys on the next video. All right? Woo! Woo! Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wild.